on this episode... So tender. The stress apparently caused his bladder to bleed. Oh, sweetheart. They can get renal failure and die. The problem with your chap is his little chap. Unfortunately, this is the last thing we can offer. Wow, that's quite incredible. You know, one little mistake can be a real issue. But first... It's OK. All right, settle down. I'm not doing anything. Take him out anywhere, and that 50 kilograms of love turns into 50 kilograms of raw aggression. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, we never, ever put him down. We love him to bits. Do I get any danger money for this? How the hell am I ever going to treat this dog if it is cancer? Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. It uh, says it, doesn't it? Well, I think it's got to say it today. Be calm. Who's yeah. that for? Well, it's for you, really. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. for our lovely Digby that's coming to see us today. Just one that wants to rip your face off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Do I get any danger money for this? Yeah, nothing to worry about at all. Yeah, Nathan. teddy bear. Teddy bear. Don't worry about it, Nathan. Hello. Here we go. They're looking nervous. I'll hold up the sign. Not bad. Digby hasn't seen a vet for quite a few years, and uh, the last vet he saw didn't know what to do. He was nervous of him, but luckily we found Scott. So what are we going to dine? Sharon, why don't you jump on that side? Yeah. There you go. All right, mate. All right, I know. I know you're mad. I know. I know. Digby at home is an absolute softie. He is sweet, he's affectionate, and he loves a cuddle. But take him out anywhere to meet any other dog or anybody else but the immediate family, and that 50 kilograms of love turns into 50 kilograms of raw aggression. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's OK. All right, settle down. I'm not doing anything. I'm not going anywhere. A lot of people would say straight away, that's an aggressive dog, it should be put down. And I understand that. Just stand up with him for a second, Amy. Sharon made one of the cardinal mistakes when buying a puppy. She didn't meet the parents. She bought a cute, fluffy puppy, thinking she was buying a beautiful, new, friendly member to their family. But that's certainly not what she got. Oh, he's a good chap. Yeah, oh. oh I'm just going to sit down. Sharon, do you want to try and sit down as well? Yeah. Let's all just have a love-in, shall we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's just see what's going to happen. There you silly thing, aren't Let's you, see what's eh? going to happen. Gonna oh, hurt, yeah? look at Mummy giving you a lovely oh. snuggle there. There we go. I'm just going to try and just give him a little tickle. On <laughs> okay. All right, I know. It's a little forward, wasn't it, mate? Come here. It's a little forward. Sorry about that. This job sometimes throws curveballs and aggressive dogs come in, aggressive cats come in, and you've got to treat them, you've got to deal with them, so you've got to find a way to make it work. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. We always make sure for him we put a muzzle on and he's safe when he goes out. He's just being responsible, really. All right. Come on. I'm just going to take a bit longer. I'm trying to rush this relationship, which is never a good <laughs> idea, is it? OK. Because when we take him out, you get people to stare, and they do make some nasty comments. Why don't you put that dog down? It makes me angry. No, we never ever put him down. We love him to bits. So, Amy, so tell me about the lump. Like, when did you first find it? I think it was about three or four months ago. Yeah. That was it. yeah. Ever since, I've been trying to find a bit. What I'd love to do is to try and let him see if he'll let me feel his chest. Oh, it'll give you a bit of a tickle there, hey? Hey? Oh. <laughs> I'm not trying to win the argument straight away. I know, I know, I'm sorry. The whole time he's lunging at me, I'm just telling myself, be calm, don't react, don't move, stay still. Oh. All right. All right. Am I scared? Are you kidding? I'm bricking it. 50 kilograms of raw muscle power coming at you with bared teeth and growling. And every instinct is saying, keep your distance. But then I look at Sharon and Amy and I see their faces just literally saying, please help us, you are our last chance. 
It's a shame he's like this, really, because I see a lot of rock wires. But you know what I can see with him? Because oh. I can really see that he is actually a sweetheart. I can see that. Yeah. I really can, Digby. You're trying to be aggro, but I can see you're sweet and lovely, really, aren't you? And look what you're letting me do. I mean, the good thing with Scott was that he did remain calm and he didn't have eye contact and he did manage to strike Digby, which no stranger has ever done. I couldn't believe it, really. I'm just using some acupuncture points as well. There's yeah. one on the tip of his ears that just chills him out a little bit. Oh, I feel very honoured. I must say that when I was finally able to touch Digby for the first time, it was exhilarating. I mean, it was like touching a wild animal. And to give him a little scratch under the chin, honestly, it gave me goosebumps. It was amazing. What a handsome big pussycat. Eh? Big 50 kilogram big teeth pussycat. <laughs> yeah. It was lovely having the love in with Digby, but it was always going to end. And it was going to end in the form of a sharp needle in his butt. Do you want to put him into this corner maybe and then he can't push back? And that was never going to bring out his happy side. I went from hero to zero, but sadly it needed to be done to knock him out, but he wasn't impressed. Done. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, he's mad. Oh, I'm a, definitely a swear word that I can't say, aren't I, mate? I always recruit Nath. When it comes to the tough cases, uh, I always give him a call. But in this case, quite frankly, it's about heavy lifting and uh, he's got the muscles for it. So yeah, Nathan gets the call. Nice little slumbering Digby. So this is Nathan. Hey. He's gonna help me knock him out. He's pretty reactive, as you can see. He's had enough to, <laughs> to knock out a rhino and yet he's still moving, but... Um... Okay. Here we go. You're impressive, mate, I'll give you that, honestly. Hey. So we'll have to use a little bit of force in order to place the IV. Once we've got the IV in, we're all good. We're just going to be covering up his face. Just in the dark is where we want him to be. We're going to stay calmer when he's in the dark. Good boy. It's all right. Nice sleepy time now. Hmm? The first time I saw Sharon and Amy, they were just introducing me to Digby and showing me the lump on his chest. Now, after a while, that lump has got bigger. So today is all about getting to grips with the lump and actually just removing it. Normally, there'll be a whole bunch of steps and examinations that we do prior to this kind of surgery. That's just not an option with Digby. So what I need to do today is knock him out. I need to remove the lump and hopefully send them home with good news. All this activity will actually make him move down in a second. He'll, he's more likely to crash oh, and sure, uh, sure, sure, sleep. Sure, sure. Now he's energised himself, can, blood supply is flowing. Those drugs will kick in a little more. So after two injections of sedation, which would have been enough to knock out a rhino, he finally is calm enough that I can get an IV anaesthetic into him. One, two, three. Now we've got to get him down the stairs and I'm walking down thinking this better not be cancer. Not only because it's dreadful news for any owner, but from Digby's point of view, how the hell am I ever going to treat this dog if it is cancer? So fingers crossed it comes out of something not to worry about. Oh yeah, I can feel it now, yeah. yeah. It's quite a, quite a decent size. Yeah, it's a big one and getting bigger. Okay. So, let's see what this nasty little thing has in store for us. So now I'm just going underneath to see what I find. It's not looking too bad to me. Cut through the middle. Nate, that looks a hell of a lot like fat. Nice, healthy, white, glistening fat. So that means there's almost certainly to be a lipoma. Nothing to worry about, which is great news for Digby. Mate, you don't need any more vets, do you? <laughs> no. Straight away, I think Sharon and Amy are going to be over the moon. They're going to be so happy. I mean, this is their 
boy, this is their love. And the fact that this is one surgery that we can perform, we can fix the problem straight away, and he potentially doesn't need to come back and see me, is good news. Good boy, that's it. All done. It was a fantastic day for everyone. This is definite win, this one. Digby is a dog that's got lots of problems. We didn't need to add to them, and today, hopefully, I've removed some of the problems from that family. Right, he woke up very quickly, <laughs> and I'm gonna exit. Good boy. Hi, guys. Hi, Scott. So, you look very expectant and very worried, but in fact, it's all good news. It looks like a fatty growth, which is called lipoma, um, which is really good news. I should be seeing smiles. It's good. Seeing smiles. <laughs> good. good. You happy? Yeah, it's good news. It is good news, yeah. isn't it? I'm glad. It's I'm nothing glad. to worry about. I've put sutures that don't need to be removed, so literally it's a case of taking him home yeah. and uh, hopefully living a, a happy and healthy life. Yeah, I'm glad. I was yeah. worried with you. I thought it would be something more serious. Yeah. But I can see he's definitely got a kind heart in there. He's just quite misunderstood. He's a lovely no, dog. He's, he's fantastic at home. Don't be about him. But I'm just really glad that I've been able to hand back your mm. beloved dog with my two hands intact. That's quite yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, that's a flat side. And without a lump on his chest. Yeah. It means a lot what you've done. There's no other vet that we actually see him. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that's very not. kind. Thanks very much. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you're the perfect. You're a perfect vet. Oh. Yeah, you are. He's so sweet. That, so. Oh, thanks. Well, that, that, that honestly means no, I could have up a bit there. <laughs> Lovely. I mean, I don't think I'm anything special. I'm literally just a vet doing his job, but uh, I'm glad that she was happy. All right. So he's just through here. Aren't you, mate? Hello. Big P, baby. Big P, sweetheart. Okay, ladies, he does still seem quite sleepy. Yeah. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in there and I'm just going to jab him again in the bum, just as if he's enjoyed that the first time. I'm sure he's going to enjoy it again. Um, Sharon, if you stand up, Amy, if you then go in in front of me, not that I'm throwing you the lions or anything, but you can just go beside his shoulders and just give him a cuddle. Hide my, me from you and him. There you go. So if you just crouch down with him, that's it. Good boy. I think many people might find the fact that I treated Digby controversial. People might say that I shouldn't have given him any treatment at all. He's aggressive and he should have been put down. Come on, mate. Time come to go on, home. Come on, dear. Come on. Well, I would say to those people that he is a much-loved member of Sharon's family. They adore him, but they know that he's got problems and they put steps in place to ensure that he's safe and everyone else around him is safe also. So I would say to them, I'll look after Digby and you look after your own dog. All right, ladies. It's been a pleasure. Bye, mate. Be a good boy. All right. Come on, then. Let's go. Here we go. Thanks very much, Scott. My pleasure. You guys look after yourselves. Yeah, thank See you, you, buddy. You got him? Come on in, honey. Thanks. See you, mate. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank bye, you. bye. 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 All the best. Bye, diggers. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Oh, man. Good boy. Oh, that'll take it out of the vet, that will. Oof. Oh, good boy. I'm fine, and you? Very well. Hi, Harry. How's well, it Well, you've doing? seen Harry for a few times now, and uh, there's quite a lot going on with him still, so I'm hoping today we'll get, get to a little bit more sorted out. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. All right, Harry. Scott will be out with you shortly. Just have a seat. Thank you very okay. much. Thank you. Five weeks or so ago, Harry swallowed a piece of string, a small piece of string, which um, got stuck in his gut somewhere and fur got pushed around it and it blocked up his passage. Anyway, they sorted that out, but the stress apparently caused his bladder to bleed and uh, he couldn't pee. Hi, Roger. Oh, hello, Scott. Good to see you again. Nice to see you. Back Hi. again. Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. Hello, Harry. Hello, <laughs> champ. All right, coming in. Let's have a chat. Come on. In you come. Come on in. 
It's very painful, actually. It's very distressing to see him when he's uncomfortable because he's usually a very laid-back cat. And uh, obviously, you don't like to see him when it hurts, yeah. He's a very friendly boy, but I think he's quite sick of us as vets, isn't he? Well, he's not really sick of you, but he'd rather not come here all the time, if that's possible. But, yes. Um, he's been in and out quite a lot. So over the last few weeks since the urinary output's been a problem, his yeah. ability to go to the toilet, tell me yeah. a little bit about how that's playing out. Well, he is fine and um, nice little cat for many hours of the day, but then for a couple of hours every so often he really has a lot of problems. He's trying to pee, uh, he's growling and uncomfortable, and uh, he's obviously in pain. So hopefully, you know, this can be sorted in some way. Yeah, okay. Well, look, before we start talking about what the next steps might be, I just want to have a little feel of his bladder. Okay. Good boy. Oh, my it's so tender. It's, oh, you saw it, yeah. mate. Just literally barely touching it. Oh, and he started to growl already. Poor Harry has had a terrible time of late. He's got something called FLUTD, which is feline lower urinary tract disease. It's caused by loads of different things, but in his case, it's stress, which has led to bleeding of the bladder lining, which has then blocked his ability to pass urine. So he's had some really tough times. Oh, sweetheart. And yeah, you can tell when a cat's in lots of discomfort yeah, when yeah, they change yeah. personality like that. Yeah. I mean, you are such a sweetheart, but that hurts, doesn't it? So the problem with your chap is his little chap. Basically, it's the bone in his penis that is the issue. Mm -hmm. What we need is flexibility of that tube to allow for the cells that are being produced by the irritated, stressed bladder to be able to come out. Mm -hmm. And they're not able to at the moment. And the concern with that is that when a cat can't urinate regularly, it can irreparably damage their kidneys. Yes, yeah. That backflow pressure of the urine from the bladder and then back to the kidneys can cause major damage. And mm -hmm. worst case scenario, they can get renal failure and die. Mm -hmm. What I need to do to your boy is to actually remove his penis. Yes, yes. Um, well, if that's going to make him better, but what would the result be? Well, ostensibly, this is a sex change operation. Yes. Yeah. So he has his penis removed, and then the urethra is then folded outwards to become basically a vagina. Yes. But by doing so, it should have a, a larger opening, and then the cells that have been clogging up at the base of his penis will now be able to be passed more okay. easily, yeah. and the threat of kidney damage would have waned. Yes, yes. We'd much rather Harry be healthy without his penis than with it and yes, quite, yeah. unwell. Well, if that's the solution and we've tried everything else, um, that's the only thing to go ahead with, so that's what we'll do. Unfortunately, we are at the point where this is the last thing we can offer mm -hmm. and we don't want his kidneys to start being damaged, so unfortunately, I'm going to have to prioritise your kidneys over your willy. Sorry, mate. It needs to be done. All right, gents. Well, you guys better say goodbye to each other. OK. Bye-bye, Harry. Come on, Jack. See you later. Here we go. All right, then, Roger. OK. Take care. Bye. And we'll see you on the other side. OK. All right. Say bye, Daddy. It's all right. I know. You love your Daddy, don't you? Mm -hmm. You do. Hey, you guys. Hi. Hey. hey, Harry. Harry's back again. Hey, buddy. Mm. What's that face for? Well, today, Harry's going to have his penis taken off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah. So we're going to go to sleep as Harry and wake up as... Harriet, I suppose. <laughs> oh, yeah. Don't listen. Oh, poor boy. Don't listen. Unfortunately, buddy, less than 1% of cats that have this condition need this very nasty surgery. Eh? It's got to be done, I'm afraid. The main issue is that his urethra, the tube from the bladder to the outside, is spasming. It's tightening up, which means that he can't pass urine normally. So unfortunately, what we need to do is something akin to a sex change operation and increase the diameter of the urethra to allow him to urinate normally. Good boy, good boy. Oh, what a noise. 
It's sleepy time now. Mm. The issue here is that if his urine continues to get blocked, the kidneys can be irreparably damaged and that can lead to kidney failure and Harry could pass away from that. It feels a bit rude having to do this. I feel a bit intrusive. Well, it's very intrusive. I can't think of anything more intrusive. We have to deal with uncomfortable things as vets all the time. For Harry to live comfortably, he needs to live without his penis. And as much as that's horrific to consider, it is what we need to do. Okay, everyone ready? Harry's happy? Yeah. Wow, that's quite incredible. Mm. So it's a complex procedure. There's lots of nerves around the site and you can get lots of complications after the procedure if you don't do it properly. So at this point, I feel confident, but still a little nervous, a few butterflies. I'm at the point now where I have got his uh, sort of internal willy, external. Okay, so now the suturing begins. It's just so fine, so delicate, and you know, one little mistake, one millimeter one way to the other can be a real issue for the cat. And now I have to say goodbye to his willy, I need to cut it off. Sorry, mate. to know for sure that the hole I've created is a decent size. Thankfully, the catheter that I can place is about three times the size of the original lumen, the diameter of the urethra, which shows that three times as much volume of urine can pass comfortably without issue. So hopefully that is gonna mean that Harry's much more comfortable in future. I'm really happy with the result. So it just means now that he shouldn't have to strain anymore. He should be able to urinate comfortably. So yeah, I'm happy. Let's wake this chap up or um... Cat up. <laughs> He's still a boy. He's still a boy. So Harry will be staying here at the practice for the next few days, being loved by all the nurses and making sure that he's able to urinate comfortably and that the suture line is kept healthy with that collar on because I know that Harry's going to want to get hold of it. All right, buddy, OK? Be a good boy, OK? No licking. No licking that spot. No looking. That's probably for the best. Hello, Hello Kirsty. I'm fine. How are you? Good, fine. Come to pick up Harry. Yes, yes. Yeah. We're looking forward to seeing him again. Oh, I yeah. bet. Should <laughs> yeah. I have a seat? Got okay. with you in a moment. Thank you. Bye. Hello, mate. Hello, handsome boy. How are you? You're so much happier now, aren't you? You are. I'm really happy with the results. I'm relieved that it's over. I'm relieved that Harry has woken up perfectly well. And the next few days will show us just how well he's able to use his new well, equipment. Come on. Oh, big bantam boy. Come on, you big brute. Let's go. Good boy. That's it. Good boy. Where is he? Where is he? There he is. Oh. Hey. hey. Hello. There you go. Hey. It's good to see you. <laughs> hey. How are you? Yeah, he's, he's looking at the door, he's, so. <laughs> oh, he wants to go, I can tell, yeah. Hey. He's doing so fantastically well, Roger. Oh, I mean, good. Literally the day after the surgery, he's now able to urinate a full bladder of, of urine. Great. Uh, Great. He's no longer uncomfortable when I feel his tummy. Yeah. He's eating well. He's just doing brilliantly well. Great. Harry has been such a fantastic patient. He's responded beautifully. He's completely comfortable. He's just a very, very happy cat. He's just doing all the right and things. And he's desperate to go home and we're desperate to have him there. So I'm sure. Yes. I'm sure you are. Yeah, yeah. Roger is such a gent, he is such an old school man, but you can tell he loves this cat and he's just so happy to have Harry back in his arms. It's great to see them both back together again. You take care and keep a close eye on that back end for oh, me. I will. Make sure he's winging for England. <laughs> all right. All Thanks the best. Again. Okay, all, all the best. very best. Bye, buddy. All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Okay, bye now. Bye bye now. See you bye, soon. Chaps. Bye, chaps. Bye. Bye. bye.
Hello, Roger. Oh, hello, Scott. How, How are, are you? you? Great to see you. It's good to see you. I've come to see your lad. Great. And he's waiting to see you. Come cool. on in. Thank you. <laughs> OK. Well, here he is. Ah. As you can see, is a picture of health. He is. Hi, mate. There. Gee whiz, you look very <laughs> handsome. Healthy and handsome, don't you, hey? Hello, buddy. All right, well... Let's have a cuddle with Dad and go and have a quick look at you, shall we? <laughs> oh, you are a lump, aren't you, hey? Come on, then. <laughs> Come on, Harry. It's a bit of a nervous day coming to see Harry today because although a required procedure, it's not a nice one. And any bloke watching this would go, ouch. So I'm just hoping that Harry doesn't hold it against me. Well, he seems very happy and healthy. How's he been? Since he's, he's been, been very home? well. He's been very well. Um, he came home, he immediately started eating well. He's back to his normal self and even better in, in a way, yeah. Yeah, and the urination, that's a, the key thing we were trying to fix is allow him to urinate more yes. uh, uh, calmly and simply and easily. Yes. Yes. Uh, is that the case? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. He's, um, he's doing very well in that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean the, the, the key to success is actually having him urinating less often with larger volumes. And that's exactly what's happening. That's absolutely yeah. perfect. Yeah, he's a very happy lad. He's completely over it and jumping around all over the place, back to his old self again. Oh, what's that for? Oh. OK, well, I suppose that's Harry. fair enough, isn't it? <laughs> hey? Is that fair enough? You're getting one back on the vet. I did remove your penis, so I think that's probably fair. <laughs> Where are you going? Where are you going? Right at the end, Harry, fair enough, wants the vet to just get off. And uh, he takes a little chunk out of me, which is fair enough, after I took a chunk away from him. But he certainly seems incredibly content and happy. Oh, yeah. Hopefully yeah. he can live yeah. a, a long and healthy life now. Yeah. I mean, he's only a, a still a young cat, really. Or well, middle-aged, I suppose, in cat years. And um, looks like he's going to be all right now. It was um, touch and go. I think we did worry a lot about him. Mm. But uh, I think he's fine now. He's still got his old spirit about him, yeah. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way. That way.